Up to this point in our study of trigonometric functions, the only translations we've been doing have been vertical and horizontal stretches. But there are vertical and horizontal translations as well. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at those aspects. As you can see in this first diagram, we've taken a basic function and we have moved it to the right h units. And just like other functions that we've dealt with, what this means is that our function, we'll call it g of x, is equal to our basic parent function, f of x, and that movement has been offset by h units. It's always x minus h inside of the parentheses because it places it in that same location. If x were to be at, say, this location, I would subtract h and it would put me back to it behaving as if it was here, giving me the function that you see. In our second set, we have our function, again we'll call it g of x, and it is equal to our parent function, f of x, but it's been moved up k units. And our vertical change, or transformation, is a plus k outside of the parentheses. Again, going back to what I've been saying all along, if it's something happening to x or theta inside of the parentheses, then you find out what it takes to make that group zero. If it's outside of the parentheses, then that is a vertical movement. <clears throat> so our parent functions that we have when we're dealing in trigonometry is y equals a sine of b times x minus h plus k as well as y equals a cosine of b times x minus h plus k. And these are the full versions of our transformed functions. We've dealt with the a and b so far, now we're going to be looking at h and k. So describe the transformations that have taken place to the parent function. If y equals sine of x minus 1.6, how is that different than its parent function? Well, first, what is the parent function? Parent function here was simply y equals sine of x. What difference does it make to have that minus 1 and 6 tenths inside of the parentheses? Well, the difference is it has been moved to the right 1 and 6 tenths units. Because we insert a 1 and 6 tenths in there for x, and it becomes 0, and then it's going to behave just like it would, was previously. Next, what if we have y equals cosine of theta plus 2 minus 4? First, again, we need to find what is our parent function. Our parent function is y equals the cosine of theta. And what's happened to theta? Well, two things. It's been moved left two units because this is really theta minus a negative 2. Or what would it take to make inside that group 0? And the answer is negative 2, so that's a leftward movement. And it's been moved down four units, as signified by the minus four out here hanging on the end. So depending on its location, inside or outside of parentheses, an add-in will either move left and right or up and down, just as we've seen in every other parent function that we've studied this year. So how do we graph these? Well, one way is to start with our basic parent function. If our parent function for a of x equals sine of x minus 2, then our parent function f of x is simply going to be the sine of x. 
And what would this look like on here? Well, our period is a standard 2 pi. And with sine, we go 0, max, 0, min, 0. And we're just going to graph this in here as a guide. Then, how do we go about our transformation? Well, what does this minus 2 do to our function? It moves it right 2 units. So, everything we have is going to move to the right by 2 units. Remember, pi here is roughly 3, and that's taken 6 lines to get those, so every 2 lines is roughly a value of 1. So, if I move everything to the right two lines, I end up here, here, and so on. And I'm going to come out with a function that follows right along with what we had before, just everything is shifted to the right two units. Now let's look at our second one, b of x. Well, b of x, the parent function, g, I'm going to call it, of x. Oh, actually let's call it f, it's still sine x. So, again, we are starting at 0, going 0, max, 0, min 0 and by the way our vertical scale forgot to set that up we end up with the same sine curve that we had from the previous exercise now how is b of x different well b of x is sine of x minus 2 because that minus 2 is not included in a set of parentheses this will be moved down two units so everywhere that we see, we're going to move down to. So we end up here. We'll go off the graph a little bit. And connecting our points, we end up with that sine wave. And it is the exact same function. Again, it's just been translated down to. So when you're graphing these, start with the parent function, either sketch it in or just understand where it is in your mind, and then make the translations accordingly. Now what happens when we have all the transformations happening simultaneously? Well, we need to follow our order of operations. For f of x, we have negative 3 sine of 2 times x minus pi thirds minus 3 halves. So let's start by establishing our vertical scale. We're going to go a scale of 1 in either direction. Then let's start listing out our transformations. Well, inside of the parentheses, we have a minus pi thirds. So that means we're moving right pi thirds from everything that we had before. Our period is going to be 2 pi divided by 2, which is simply pi. So it's going to speed up its process. Our amplitude is going to be 3, but because it's negative 3, we have a vertical reflection. And lastly, because we have a minus 3 halves at the end, we'll be down 3 halves. So, a lot going on here. Again, we can take and quickly sketch in our parent function just as a guide. Then, Let's begin our transformations. We're going to start by moving right pi thirds. So pi thirds puts us to here. 
And now our unit, or our period, is going to be every pi. So if we're at 1 pi thirds, this will repeat at 4 pi thirds. Then halfway in between that, at this location, will be our zero, our other zero. So we've now established where our zeros are located at, every three lines if we're just following along with the scale. Next, we're going to have an amplitude of three, but it's going to be reflected down. So, and move down one and a half units. So let's move all these points down one and a half units. And instead of going up then down, we're going to go down then up. And that amount will be by three. So counting it out, one, two, three will be just off the graph, right about here. And then on the other side, for our maximum, we'll go one, two, three, have a maximum there. And a minimum again here, we end up with a graph that looks about like this. So again, we're starting with our parent function and then working our way through to the rest of it. Now let's see if we can do the same for our cosine function g of x. Cosine function, again, we're going to have a vertical scale of 1. And our cosine function starts at that maximum and follows a pattern roughly like this. Then, let's list out our transformations. We're going to be moving left 1. We're going to have a period of 2 pi divided by pi halves, which is simply 4. We're going to have an amplitude of 2 and a vertical shift of down 3. The horizontal shift is often referred to as a phase shift. The vertical shift is just called vertical shift. Now let's start graphing in our transformations. The first is we're going to move left one unit, which is approximately two squares on our grid for every point that we have on here. Next, we need to establish a period of four. So from our starting location, we are going to integrate in four as our whole period. Right now, our period is two pi, which is approximately six and a quarter. So if we start here and move by four, we'll have one, two, three, Four, and this needs to be where we're back to. So at that location, I'm going to put a little vertical line to mark that that's my end of my full system. And we have to move down three. So my starting point is actually going to be here. I know that I'm going to have to end a full system here. And those are both zeros with it going down and up in between them. So I take the halfway point as another zero and then from there I can build my minimum in halfway in between them and a maximum halfway between the next two and we end up with a function that looks about like this and we would continue it on as far as we can with the graph that's available to us. 
So a lot of transformations happening in here and you just have to build them up piece by piece. Go back and review this lesson if needed, but have those basic concepts down ready to use.